Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm pleased to bring you some information on a kind of soul wounding uh, that that's coming up to the light right now and being resolved. Actually two kinds and it's also a heads up for those that are um, like in the karmic path of this kind of soul wounding so that they can take good care of themselves and protect themselves and stay alive and healthy and so forth free of curses free of all kinds of illnesses and just completely in balanced excellent health so that's my wish and blessing for for everyone concerned uh, so I spoke a little about this this kind of issue before the the issue is the fugue state that sometimes people fall into when they have wounding in the lower chakras, soul wounding, almost always involving many prior lifetimes. This is a tough school, a tough school of hard knocks here in the duality realm. And so the last dark age has just ended and many people are, just about everybody is in a hospital right now getting better. So here's a tough case here of many lifetimes of soul wounding. In this case, in the first, the basal, and the second, uh, the sexual chakra. And um, it expresses itself in, uh, in the one person who is very wounded from many lifetimes and, and is now being healed. It expresses itself as um, uh, the first ch chakra, fearfulness, fear to take a stand in the world, fear for one's life. And then the second chakra as, um, as uh, fear of, of undertaking the act of sex. Because this, this long list of soul wounding that's being healed right now, so sometimes because of the blocking or like lack of balance in the energy flow of the first two chakras, sometimes this person falls into a fugue state. This is a state of, um, of sudden lack of conscious awareness that can last only a few seconds or an hour or sometimes for days. And uh, when the person snaps out of the fugue state, there's a sense of, uh, there's a feeling of amnesia, lack of memory, memory loss about the interval of the fugue state. When a person descends into unconscious state and, um, and experiences the soul wounding, in this case, of the first and second chakras. Now, what I found out, uh, I know there's not a lot in Wikipedia about fugue state, but I know a few things from my clear uh, hearing and clear vision. I know a few things uh, that aren't mentioned in Wikipedia about the fugue state. Uh, in, in these instances of deep soul wounding, what happens is that the energies of the first and second chakra, wounded though they be, uh, of the first person, flow forth into another person as an obsessive uh, energy of the unconscious mind which then overtakes the conscious mind of this second person and causes uh, in a sleepwalking state causes this person to commit crimes of the sort that are feared by the first person. So what you'll see is acts of murder uh, and um, rape and other similar things like torture um, and these this second person is most likely in the um, ancillary circle somehow in the satellite group of the first person someone that this person knows may or may not associate with um, per perhaps has had uh, intimate contact with um, in fact that's likely uh, but not 
ne absolutely necessary. I don't know that it has to be the case, but but um, because the energies of the two people are so very different, if a se sexual liaison occurs, uh, sexual uh, s psychic bonding occurs, then this this flowing forth of the consciousness is is facilitated by that. That's what I meant to say. So the type of person that's a second person will be someone with imbalanced energies uh, in their own chakras. Um, most likely a felon, a person who has already committed murder. Uh, uh, most likely a person with a very strong sex drive or desire elemental as I call it. In other words, the, the, the energies of the first three chakras will be very strong. The vital body will be very strong. And the reason for that is that the stronger the vital body of this second person, whose energy uh, uh, can be obsessed and replaced by the first person, uh, so that he begins sleepwalking because of his many uh, samskaras of violence in prior lifetimes, he is he's what you might call easy, easier to obsess and easier to, to get to carry out the unconscious fantasies caused by the soul wounding of the first person. Okay, so so. So this will happen over and over again, this obsession of the second person, this carrying out of violent acts and violent deeds that represent the fears of the first person, and neither will be the wiser for it. That's the interesting thing. So, so those of us in the healing professions and the spiritual professions um, must be very carefully on the lookout for this, this dynamic um, succumbing of Interval in, in at intervals, it may be taking place with people all over the world, and that could be the acting out that we're seeing from time to time uh, in the newspaper headlines. Um, but in this particular instance of very deep soul wounding, it it happens um, not in spurts of like of serial killings or mass murders or those sorts of things, but rather. Um, once in a while, when the first person, say, either takes drugs, is under the influence of drugs, or is very sleepy or drowsy or sick, something like that, so that he becomes uh, tired and uh, can't hold the higher consciousness as well. So there's one other thing I wanted to mention, and that is when this type of scenario occurs, uh, uh, it seems more likely to occur when the first person is not getting, uh, is not sexually satisfied and the f second person has no inhibitions about uh, being sexually satisfied and the reasons for the first person not to be sexually satisfied may vary. It might be uh, just inclination or character, it might be a, a belief, or uh, it's just, it's hard to say, but it's just the, the lack of that satisfaction um, that's, that's the, that provides the, the, like the engine for this obsessional energy and this fugue state. Uh, so just one other thing I wanted to mention is, and in regard to this duo scenario, um, I believe it's wrong to, uh, once, once this is found out, this energy is found out, it's certainly wrong to consciously obsess uh, people and to get them to commit acts of violence um, for any reason. I, I don't believe in consequentialism and I don't believe uh, that it's that, any, that there's any end that justifies these violent means. And I do believe in, the, in assisting other people in their soul evolution. Uh, 
And I, I look at cases where people act out uh, in ways that are considered violent or, or criminal by society. And in, in, in all cases, when these actions occur, there's like a coarsening of the astral matter in the fourth dimension. And this coarsening causes suffering, either now as we expand into the astral matter in the astral body during the awakening process, or after we pass on and, and experience life in our astral bodies for a while. It's the coarsening of the astral matter that causes the hell world a suffering energy, the, 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 like the uh, burning sensation as that burns off uh, in the, when we sense those particles of our being that are astral in nature. So how can it be good to ask someone or to do this ourselves to, to perform an act of violence that coarsens our astral matter and causes us suffering? All right. This this re results in soul devolution rather than soul evolution. So, so that's that's the story for today, and I hope you will all notice if if people seem to be falling into this tendency and help them to obtain uh, counseling and clearing by whatever means, all the parties concerned, so that we may all be safe as we ascend, as we as we attain the awakening so that our physical form may remain on earth in grounded state. I forgot to mention I have seen one other kind of second person in the scenario mentioned above. Um, that kind of person uh, is not not the kind of person that's extremely strong in the desire elemental in the vital body but um, there's a deficiency in the nervous system, kind of a, a lack of steadiness in the kundalini energy. Uh, it, it looks to me like a fear of something, whether in this lifetime or in other lifetime, that resulted in low self-esteem or, yeah, and um, a kind of a lack of egoic shell uh, strength uh, that makes it easier for this person to be obsessed. So the energy of someone with, uh, I don't, you know, not a stronger ego, but I know, a person that they look up to and admire, say a spiritual person, a person that they greatly admire, that kind of energy, while that person is the person number one is in a fugue state, can come and sweep over the second person. I saw one time, for instance, the first person uh, spoke in a particular way with a, cer a certain like dialect and, and had been uh, obsessing another person, uh, a different person. And then I saw a wave of obsession like flow into this, this other person that had low self-esteem and who, who practiced black magic, by the way. And practicing black magic always weakens the electromagnetic field. Um, so, so it flowed in and, and suddenly his voice changed. You know, you've seen things like that on TV. His voice changed from his own normal way of speaking to the other person's way of speaking. So that was one way that I, and became very much a flow of that other person's personality. Yet, were I to question that other person, I would no doubt find out that he didn't know the one thing about it, that it was all taking place in a fugue state for which, from which he felt a sense of amnesia after he emerged from it. I, and I wonder if the second person would remember either. Yet those around, you know, that were there at the time, they saw this happen. I don't think that it's a conscious, uh, something conscious that happens to the second person. I may be wrong about that, though. 
they may willingly give their, their personality over to another person. It'd be interesting to find out in future. So, this is the second addendum. There's one other um, astral story that I've heard over and over again, mostly like a wish or a hope or like that, and uh, sometimes as a developed plan of action. And I don't know whether it's ever been carried out or not, but because it's in the astral air, I thought I'd better mention it. And it, it sort of comes from the fugue, segues off of the fugue state story that I was just talking about. Um, a person, it involves two people. Uh, the one person uh, with the ability to obsess either consciously or unconsciously and the second person who has a tendency towards violence uh, and strong vital body most likely. And these two people are working in concert either consciously or unconsciously and the intention is to find a woman uh, who is alone and who has something that they want, say a house or some money or something and um, to have intercourse with her one time or to make it seem like they have that's the one person and then uh, to back that up somehow with fake uh, marriage certificate and then for the other person to come and and do her in somehow it's some some very clever way you know the Agatha Christie way <laughs> and so then the uh, whatever it is that they want the house or the money or whatever it is goes to an organization that both of them benefit from and there's a um, there's another wish fulfillment like story that's going around on the astral plane in that regard and it has to do with finding a couple that has something that these people want and either consciously or unconsciously and uh, finding a way to cause the death of the of the man uh, so that either through black magic or through some physical means so that then the woman will be in a position to fall prey to this this scheme about uh, the one false marriage claim and the two the the very um, the very elaborately safeguarded murder of the woman and then the transfer of the money into a, like a, a status that can be enjoyed by the both of these these two people so yet another thing to be very careful of these days the fur is flying is it not and we have a long way to go and so we're all hanging in like troopers that's terrific i'm i'm honored to